Hey there, everyone. Welcome to a new video on our channel. Today, we're diving into the captivating world of the Manwa, Betrayal of Dignity. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to show some love by hitting that like button and subscribing to help our channel thrive. Thanks for joining us, let's jump right in. On a bright sunny day, the carriage moved along the road, its gentle rattling mingling with the sound of hooves against the dry grass. Two ladies sat inside as it moved steadily forward. You absolutely couldn't make a scene this time, Alice. Do you understand, advised a lady, holding a walking stick. But that last soiree was just incredibly dull. I couldn't help it, replied the other lady known as Alice Verdier, looking out the window. And how was I to know a few glasses of sherry would get me so tipsy? She reminisced with an excited look. Anyhow, I'm certain this time will be much livelier with you there. You agree, don't you? Alice asked Chloe, causing her to smile softly. I'm being sincere, Chloe Verdier said, holding her stick firmly. You really must behave yourself this time. This ball is hosted by none other than Duke This. You have to find yourself a potential suitor, Chloe said before being interrupted by Alice. I know, I am well aware that my betrothal is the only thing that can save our family from drowning in debt, Alice said, dejectedly. Still, I've always hoped to find someone who would sweep me off my feet, Alice continued with a sigh of relief. I'm sorry, Alice. If only my leg wasn't in such a state, Chloe said softly, squeezing her walking stick hard. Alice jolted up from her seat amidst the carriage's rattling movement. I wish I didn't have to play such a heavy burden on my younger sister. This is all my fault, Chloe thought, her facial expression turning sad. Alice sprang up from her seat, plunking down next to her sister, holding her hand to stop her from feeling guilty. Chloe, what could you possibly have to feel sorry for, she said excitedly, squeezing her sister tightly. If anyone is to blame, it's our father for loving mother so much that he spent his entire fortune on her medical bills and completely failed to manage his estate, Alice continued, cheering her sister up. Alice! Chloe exclaimed, holding back her laughter. Think of what happened three years ago. Despite our family's precarious circumstances, he allowed Duke this army to use our castle, Alice said, startling her sister. He may be our father, but I can't tell if he possesses a heart of gold or if he's just a fool, Alice said softly. Chloe looked tense, fixing her gaze to the ground, saying nothing as she listened to Alice speak. Have you heard the rumors about Duke this? None of them are good, Alice said, recounting the story. She told Chloe of the young Duke who led his soldiers to great victory. Word has it that he's fathered several illegitimate children with his mistresses, only to have them executed in secret, she said, painting a horrible scene of horror about the Duke. She told Chloe that he's also said to have a temperament, warning her that if anyone gets on his bad side, he will completely ruin them, regardless of any title they may hold. Many seem to think it would have been better if he'd perished in battle, Alice said clumsily. Alice, Chloe exclaimed, causing her to shut up for a while. Considering our family's standing, we're lucky to have even been invited to this event, Chloe said, fixing her gaze on her sister. Even so, he's not the kind of person we should be associating with, she said softly. There are ominous rumors floating about, and we have no idea what his intentions are. I just hope we don't run into him while we are enjoying the festivities, Alice said, her eyes closed as though she prayed not to encounter the Duke. Chloe didn't interrupt her as she watched her poor sister. Oh. But I suppose we will have to greet him since he's the host, Alice said. She didn't observe Chloe bite her lips, softly gripping onto her walking stick. You cannot allow yourself to be afraid, Chloe, she told herself inwardly, attempting not to let fear overtake her. Her mind wandered to where it all began, three years earlier in the Verdier estate. Viscount Verdier, Chloe and Alice Verdier's father, the lord of the small castle, gladly opened the gates to his estate for the imperial army as it retreated from battle during the cold winter. Outside the comfort of her room, Chloe was seen limping and strolling past some soldiers. So, it is true, Viscount Verdier's eldest daughter is a cripple, one soldier whispered, gossiping with another as they watched her pass. How is she to attend to anyone in such a state? Won't she just be in the way, a second guard whispered to his comrade. Leave her be. The cripple just wants to help, the first soldier finalized as they watched her tend to the wounded soldiers. Unknown to Chloe, her father stood far from her, observing her work. I've no complaints as she's a sight to behold, someone said softly, watching her work. Yes, her face is decent, at least, another added. Back inside, in the comfort of her warm room, Chloe was approached by a staff of the estate. His lordship has requested you leave the wounded in the care of the servant, he told her with a bow. I understand, Chloe told him before shutting her door. Did I cause my father to worry? Chloe thought with a sigh as she sat on her bed. 
Still, I imagine the pain they are experiencing must have them feeling on edge, she thought, observing the wounded soldiers from her window. I always thought it is the duty of nobility to come to the aid of the destitute and the infirm, she thought, observing the soldiers limping on her foot. Attention, someone suddenly announced, causing Chloe to flinch as she wondered what was going on. Someone stepped forward. Greet your commander, the announcer said, prompting the properly dressed soldiers to stand, saluting the commander in unison. That's the commander? Chloe thought, peeping at the commander. Earlier today, I received news of my father Wilhelm von Thys passing, the commander announced with a dark persona. He was beheaded by the enemy, who has chosen to display his head on their castle walls, he announced calmly, causing an uproar of tears among his men. Some tried hiding their emotions, but it was almost impossible. You, he said boldly, referring to a soldier in front of him, causing him to startle. Do you wish to return home, he asked him. The man was hesitant to speak. It does not seem like you do, he said harshly. No, no, sir, I do, the man stuttered. My wife recently gave birth to our child without me by her side. I wish nothing more than to see the two of them, the man said. And you, the commander said, referring to another soldier. I worry for my mother, whom I had to leave sick and alone at home, the person said sadly with his head bowed. I must work to support my young brother, so he doesn't starve, another said amidst the soldiers. My betrothed awaits my return, said another. I can hear the anguish overflowing in their voices, Chloe thought as she watched them. As you can see, there are countless reasons why we must end this war and return to our homes. The same goes for me. I haven't been able to recover my father's body, let alone hold a funeral to put him to rest. However, we must remember that it is not through God's will that the war is won or lost, which is precisely why I refuse to back down. I shall do everything in my power to lead my soldiers to victory. After all, this is a matter of house this pride and dignity, the commander, Damien Ernst von Thys, said with a strong resolve, captivating everyone. Chloe's heart raced as she thought, Damien Ernst von Thys. Damien declared, it is now up to you to transform all of the desperation and longing you just showed me into action. His words instantly boosted the soldiers' morale as they shouted. Chloe, observing from a distance, thought to herself, he managed to boost the soldiers' morale in an instant, her heart racing. He's a much greater man than I thought, she continued, blushing slightly. The soldiers began cheering, chanting this, 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 as Damien stood with his arms folded, watching them. Suddenly, he glanced upward, his eyes meeting Alice's, startling her. In that instant, she rushed to hide, accidentally knocking a plate off her table near the window, causing it to fall and broke. She sat away from the window, hiding and covering her mouth to avoid making noise. Did our eyes just meet, she wondered quietly before cautiously peeping from her window. The duke walked away from his cheering men, and Chloe slumped on the floor, letting out a sigh of relief. I would never be able to do something like that after hearing of my father's passing, she thought sadly, her gaze turning somber. She went silent, closing her eyes as she knelt down to say a prayer for the troops. Please, Chloe murmured, allow those soldiers to return home, so they may look after their loved ones. As she prayed, Damien paused his walk, turning his gaze toward Alice's window, hoping to catch a glimpse of her again. That their courage may bear fruit in battle, she said, finalizing her prayer. The next morning arrived. Chloe woke up very early, peeking out of her room door to find the hallway deserted. I should hurry and get back before everyone wakes up, she said to herself, beginning to limp gently with her walking stick. Lady Chloe, someone called, startling her and causing her to halt. Gillis, she said, turning to look at the person who called her. She slipped, losing her balance and about to fall, but Gillis caught her, returning her to a standing position. You saved me, she told him softly as he held her firmly with both hands. Where are you headed to early in the morning? I believe it was only yesterday that his lordship asked you to stay in your room, he said, visibly tensed. I'm going to gather some medicinal herbs from the forest, Chloe replied with a smile, showing him her basket. Herbs? I can do that for you, Gillis protested. And what shall we do if you end up picking poisonous ones and giving me a fright like last time? Chloe asked him. Oh, well, Gillis said, fully flustered and embarrassed. I'll feel more at ease if I gather them myself, Chloe said, smiling at him. That may be true, but it isn't safe, and the air is much too cold. His lordship is concerned, Gillis replied, appearing worried before being interrupted. Gillis, you have no reason to worry. I've gone out on my own plenty of times, Chloe said excitedly, cutting him off. He went mute before saying, yes, my lady. Do be careful, bidding her farewell as she smiled at him. When we first met, his head barely reached my shoulders, she thought to herself as she walked away gently. He's grown so much, she muttered to herself. 
Finally in the forest, Chloe gathered some herbs. Everyone is working hard. I must make myself useful as well, she said softly to herself as she plucked the herbs. Chloe heard rustling of leaves nearby, puzzling her. She observed someone standing in front of her and realized instantly who it was. Duke this, she said inwardly in horror. Chloe wondered what he was doing in the forest at this hour. No one besides me knows about this spot. Something tells me it'd be best not to disturb him. I should leave as quietly as possible, she thought before accidentally stepping on some dried leaves with her walking stick, making a crunch sound. Who's there? Duke this shouted, making her freeze with fear as she dropped her basket immediately. I asked your name, he said in a demanding voice as he stepped closer to Chloe. My apologies, your grace. I am Chloe Verdier, the daughter of Viscount Verdier, she said, bowing her head as she limped gently, holding her walking stick. I've been noticing a pattern since last night, Duke Damien said gently as he stepped closer to her, prompting her to fix her gaze at him. It seems Lord Verdier's eldest daughter has a habit of spying on people like a little rat, Duke Damien said coldly. I apologize if I have offended you, Chloe said to the Duke, her voice was calm. But I swear on my name that I was doing nothing of the sort just now. Meaning you were yesterday, the Duke responded, folding his hands and fixing her with a steady gaze. Was it your father's order to throw yourself at me in order to seduce me, he continued. Chloe felt a stab of surprise at his accusation. What, she thought. So, Lord Verdier wasn't as naive as he looked. What an ambitious fellow, the duke said. That is not the case, she finally managed to say, bowing her head slightly. Really now, the duke smirked. Then why else would you have made a show of yourself? Treating the rotten, pus-filled wounds of my soldiers, he said as his tone turned cold. House Verdier may be of low standing, but such work isn't becoming of a noble woman. Especially one of your conditions, he added, his gaze unyielding. Chloe gripped her walking stick, she felt a mix of anger and disdain. Is this really the same man I saw yesterday, she thought, incredulous at his disrespectful tone. I was only trying to help those who had set out for war to protect their families, Chloe explained firmly. I did not expect my title to become an issue. My late mother taught us that though our family may be humble in rank, as nobles, it is our duty to come to the aid of those in need. That is the comportment expected of the nobility. The comportment of the nobility, you say? Duke Damien replied, almost laughing. He approached Chloe gently. Chloe Verdier, has it never occurred to you that trying to do something beyond your abilities is not only selfish, but it also creates a nuisance to others, he said as he leaned forward. If you had heard the filthy jokes the men told as you hobbled around between them, would you still be able to keep your head so high and talk about the comportment of a noblewoman? The Duke continued. Chloe felt a pang of discomfort as Duke Damien exposed the gossip among his soldiers about her. What if the Viscount had overheard, he continued softly. If I were him, I would have severed the heads of anyone who dared sully my daughter's name, he continued as he brushed Chloe's hair. Those soldiers have seen dozens of their comrades slaughtered in battle. Do you know what that does to a man? Duke Damien said, holding her face gently. What's more, he continued, it isn't even fully light yet, and here you are wandering around in the forest with that leg of yours. If something were to happen to you, who would be to blame? His words rendered Chloe momentarily mute as she tried to ease her tension. This land has been part of the Verdier estate long before I was born. No one may enter these grounds without permission. It is safe, Chloe asserted confidently, turning her gaze away from his. Safe? Duke Damien asked, his smirk unsettling. Yes, it is completely safe, Chloe insisted with confidence. Would you still babble such nonsense if I were to do this? Duke Damien said, placing her hand on her walking stick. Chloe was startled, unsure of his next move. Duke Damien yanked her walking stick far from her reach. Chloe protested, trying to reach for her walking stick, but she couldn't grasp it. What are you, she said, her tone edged with anger, as her words were interrupted by a sharp sound as the Duke stabbed something with it forcefully. Looking down, she saw the Duke had plunged her walking stick hard into a snake's head, killing it instantly. There is always danger lurking in the forest, he told her, retracting her walking stick from the dead animal. You are reckless to think otherwise, he admonished. It's damaged, but you should be able to make it back to the castle, he said, referring to her walking stick. No, thank you, Chloe replied softly, still in shock over the recent event. Ha, huh, I see you have a habit of temper. That's unexpected, Duke Damien said softly, in an almost abusive manner. Let me examine your leg, he continued, reaching over gently and lifting the hem of her skirt to expose her injured leg. Is it hereditary, he asked, causing her to blush almost instantly. Why? Why must you insist on being so rude? Chloe asked him, her face still red. The duke hesitated for a moment. You are much too sensitive. 
I was simply asking you a question, yet you mistook it for an attack. Allowing your emotions to prevail only leads to defeat, Lady Chloe, he said as he got up. I am not a soldier, your grace. I do not fight wars, Chloe replied politely. Life itself is war, especially for someone like you, he cut her short. That may be, but that is still no reason for you to pry into my life, Chloe retorted with a harsh tone. I only wanted to give you advice. Your refusal to thank me tells me I've struck a nerve, he said to her, without any remorse for his words. Chloe couldn't help but think he was like the devil himself. I couldn't have been more wrong about him, she thought. Your grace, with all due respect, I have two things I would like to say to you, Chloe spoke up, clenching her dress. Be my guest, he told her with a nod, signaling her to go on. First, as for this cane that you've damaged, I'd like a replacement, she said firmly. I'll have a word with the woodworker as soon as I return to the barracks, he replied with a faint smile. No, she interrupted. I want a cane made from the birch trees that grow on the Thys estate, she demanded. What? Duke Damien asked, surprised, his eyes piercing through her gaze. I recall you saying yesterday that you would return victorious from the war, she told him. And, he asked, a smirk playing on his face. Once you go back to the estate after this is all over, I'd like you to make me. Chloe was saying, about to complete her request before Duke Damien reached out, holding her face, his smile evident. My lady. What if I were to give you something even better, he said, shutting her up. It seemed your father definitely wanted something more, the duke said softly, still holding her face. Chloe pushed his hand away gently. Which brings me to my second point. If my father has ever praised his daughters in front of you, it was purely out of fatherly love. He adores his two daughters, but he's not so out of touch with reality that he'd forget House Verdier is far below House this in rank, she told him seriously. You're not the only one who would prefer not to become involved with an impaired woman. The same is true of all men, I'm sure, she said. Save your self-disparagement for your journals, he told her. No, there is no disparagement when it comes to the truth, she said boldly before turning away from him, limping gently. I'd like to make one thing clear, though. You're free to pity me, but you have no right to assume that I'm unhappy or that my life is a war, Chloe said as she backed away from Duke Damien. Does that mean you were happy living as you were, he asked, his tone becoming serious. Chloe paused for a moment. Your life will never change, Duke Damien told her confidently. Yes, I was content. Living a peaceful, unchanging life in the land where I was born. For the rest of my days, that is happiness to me, she told him courageously. Chloe didn't quite remember how she got back to the castle after her encounter with the duke on that day. All she knew was that the cold early morning wind enveloped her the whole way. Like the snake she saw in the forest. Lady Chloe, the duke and his men have just left, Gillis told Chloe, waking her from her nightmare. Thank you for letting me know, Gillis, she said, her face flushed. It was a long time ago, before Chloe returned to that forest. We've arrived, the coachman announced, signifying an end to their journey, bringing her back to the present day, which was three years later at the castle rose of house this. The sisters walked gently into the castle. I cannot believe this castle is used solely for the duke's entertainment, and for only one season of the year. It's ridiculously extravagant, Alice said loudly. Alice, Chloe said, trying to silence her. I'm already exhausted, Alice said, trying to rest her back against the wall. Lady Alice Verdier, a man called softly. Oh! Alice exclaimed, and both sisters' eyes lit up to look at who was asking. How wonderful to see you again, Lord Cormier, Alice told the man, making him smile. He smiled at her. Might I be so forward as to ask you for the next dance, he said, leaning forward, asking for Alice's hand politely. I would be delighted, she said, smiling. Oh, this is my sister Chloe, Alice said, smiling as she introduced her sister to Lord Cormier. It's an honor, Lord Cormier, Chloe said, both bowing to greet each other. No, when it comes to meeting Lady Alice's sister, the honor is all mine, he said with a bow. Perhaps we could dance, Lord Cormier was saying before he stopped his speech, observing the cane in her hand. Ah, he said, holding the back of his head, looking a bit awkward. The sight of all these beautiful people dancing is joy in itself. Though I do appreciate the thought, Chloe said with a smile. The ballroom lighting up with good music and people dancing as she observed her sister dancing. It seems everyone's forgotten about the scene Alice caused at the last ball. Count Cormier seems like a fine match for her. I have yet to hear anyone mention anything negative about him, and his intentions seem sincere. I'm glad, Chloe thought as she resigned herself to fate. Does this mean I should offer a word of thanks to the Duke? I'd prefer to avoid him, if possible, but that wouldn't be proper, she thought with a heavy sigh as she clutched onto her walking cane. Why on earth did he invite us here, she pondered, despite the music playing in the room. 
Is it because our father helped him three years ago, as Alice said? But her eyes went sad as her thoughts drifted down memory lane, reminiscing upon their last encounter in the forest. He didn't seem like someone who appreciates kindness, she told herself. Suddenly, chatter and murmurs began among the crowd as they stopped dancing, signifying the entrance of the host. I hope he's completely forgotten who I am, she thought to herself, gripping the head of her cane hard. Duke Damien came down gently from the stairs, causing chatter and murmur to increase. Oh, look. It's the Duke, someone yelled out. He walked gallantly, his hand clutching onto his sword by his side. The clacks from his footsteps could be heard by all. Chloe's face still remained bowed, not wanting to draw attention. Duke Damien walked close to her before stopping in front of her. Chloe felt his presence as she tensed but refused to look up. Greetings, your grace, she slowly said, getting up, bowing her head slowly. It's been a while, Lady Chloe of House Verdier, Duke Damien said with a smile. I am greatly indebted to your father, the Viscount, for his assistance three years ago. I would have liked to thank him in person, but I have been too busy, he announced to everyone's hearing, stunning the crowd. Thank you for accepting my invitation, he told her. It's an honor to be here, your grace, she said, still dodging his gaze. He noticed her clutching her cane. Raising his hand, he drew Chloe's attention. If it isn't too much to ask, may I have this dance, he told her, leaving her stunned. Whispers flitted through the crowd as someone murmured, what is going through his grace's mind? Didn't he notice her cane? Another voice joined in. Unlikely. She must have upset house this somehow. Poor thing, another whispered. She couldn't help but think, this man. My sincerest apologies, your grace. I'm afraid I'm not quite proficient enough to be your dance partner, she said, looking tense as she couldn't help but notice that he hadn't changed a bit. Are you turning me down because too many others have already asked you and I might have to wait, the duke asked, stepping closer to her, causing her to flinch. If that isn't the case, I hope you aren't trying to refuse me, he said with a grin. Chloe gripped the head of her cane firmly, gently drifting her gaze away from his. As I would very much like to dance with you, the duke said before being interrupted by someone. Are you tormenting an innocent young woman again, Damien, someone asked, prompting the duke to look in the person's direction. Can't you see the poor girl's about to burst into tears? Johannes, the first prince of the kingdom Swanton, said as he watched the couple. She's already declined your offer. It's not very gentlemanly to keep harassing her, Johannes said, wearing a smile as he approached them. Did you forget your manners after spending so much time on the battlefield? He asked Duke Damien, resting his hand over the duke's shoulder. Asking a beautiful woman to dance isn't what I consider a breach of etiquette, Duke Damien said clumsily. And I assured you that she isn't the type to cry easily, Duke Damien told him, fixing his gaze at Chloe, whose eyes remained fixed away from them. Johanna sighed in disgust as he watched the duke's facial expression. I apologize on my cousin's behalf. How uncouth of him, Johanna said to Chloe, leaning in closer towards her direction. With all due respect, your highness, I believe his grace was only concerned that I would end up a wallflower due to my condition. Please rescind your apology, Chloe said, fixing her gaze at the prince, taking the prince by surprise. What a clever young lady. Your name, he asked as he approached her, Duke Damien watching him with an unhappy look. I am Chloe Verdier, the eldest daughter of Viscount Verdier, Chloe told him, introducing herself. Ah, House Verdier, Johanna said, touching Chloe's shoulder, sending shivers down her body. I'd like to meet the Viscount. I'm intrigued by the man who raised such a beautiful daughter to be so bold, Johannes continued, his hand still on her shoulder. Apologies, your highness. I am here today with my younger sister, not my father, she said, bowing down before she remembered she hadn't seen Alice for quite some time. Come to think of it, I haven't seen Alice in some time. Where did she go? She was here not long ago, she thought, looking scared as she tried scanning the room for her sister. Hmm, is that so? Then introduce her to me later. I'm rather busy at the moment, Prince Johanna said, retreating from them. Come, Damien, wipe that surly look off your face, he said cheerfully as the women around him blushed. What should I do? Chloe wondered as it dawned on her that her sister was missing. Where did you go off to, Alice? Don't tell me you've gotten yourself into trouble again, she thought, feeling scared. Well, where is your sister, Lady Chloe? Duke Damien asked, looking down at her sad facial reaction, causing her to flinch a little. The ballroom is so large I cannot see her. I shall go look for her at once, if you would allow me, she asked, seeking permission. Chloe Verdier, he smirked before touching her hand. Do you remember our agreement? Our secret little agreement, he said, whispering to her. Regarding your cane, he said softly. Unless you are going to hand me a new one, please, let go of my hand, Chloe told him softly. Don't worry, you'll get it soon, he said before snatching her cane. 
Your grace, Chloe exclaimed softly. So, you've gotten yourself a new one, Duke Damien said, observing her new walking cane. This man is insufferable, she thought inwardly. It seems you're too desperate to find your sister to scowl at me this time, he told her, still smirking. She turned away from his gaze. It would be no good if she were inebriated and indisposed yet again. Would it? Come, the castle is expansive, as you said, so as its master, I shall guide you, he said, offering his hand and beckoning her to take it for support. Outside the castle, the duo walk together. Am I working too fast? Duke Damien asks Chloe. No, your grace, Chloe told him, holding his arm. It seems you've practiced working on your own quite a bit, he told her as she trembled while walking carefully. That must have been terribly painful, he told her. You are too kind, your grace, she said, squeezing his arm tightly. You've still got that fighting spirit, I see. Or have you become more skilled, he asked her, observing her shaking, as she gripped him harder. If only I hadn't let him take my cane, Chloe thought, closing her eyes. They continued with their walk until they reached the duke's garden. The wind has picked up, he said to her, observing her look with the side of his eyes. Who put those hair ornaments in for you, he asked her. Pardon? I did it myself, she told him. No wonder it looks a mess, he said to her rudely. Please return my cane, she pleaded. Shall I? Duke Damien said, still leading her through the garden. I am told that a young woman was spotted running this way in excitement, he told her. I had a feeling it might be your sister, he said softly, leading her through the garden's maze. Alice, please don't be getting yourself into trouble, I'm begging you, Chloe murmured softly, remembering her sister's warm smile. From a distance, they could hear the panting of two individuals engaged in an inconvenient act. The couple came to a halt, observing the romance before them. Alice. Chloe exclaimed in dismay as she couldn't believe her eyes. Her sister was in the arms of another man, lost in the moment. Thank you for joining us in this incredible adventure. If you enjoyed what you watched, please consider liking, subscribing and ringing that notifications bell. Your comments mean the world to us and help us improve. The next episode promises even more excitement and unexpected twists. So stay tuned as we embark in this thrilling journey together. Keep the anticipation alive and we'll catch you in the next episode.